Hello friends, this video on reproduction in animals part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the process of fertilization because by now we know how the male sex cell that is the male gamete which is sperm, how sperm is produced. We also know the female sex cell that is ovum or egg how that is produced. So by now what do we know that the ovum is there in the fallopian tube and where is the sperm? sperm? The sperm which gets released from the penis into the vagina of the woman. So the sperm is in the vagina and the egg is in the uh, fallopian tube. So now we will see how they both meet and fertilization take place. So what is fertilization? It is the fusion of sperm and egg to form a new cell that is fertilization so the simply the process of fusion of a sperm and egg is called fertilization so in human beings what happens is you have a male you have a female so this is like she let us suppose that she is the mother and he is the father so that's how you have a male and a female person so the female produces the egg cell so this is the ovum or the egg cell and what do the male does? So the male produces the sperm which is the male gamete. Now during fertilization what happens? This male, the ovum and the sperm will fuse together and this fusion is called fertilization. So when they fuse together what happens? It results in the formation of zygote. So this forms Zygote. Zygote is a single cell structure. It is just one cell which is formed by fusion of ovum and sperm. You remember in one of the previous slide I was telling you that in case of human beings every cell inside every cell you have a fixed number of chromosomes and the number of chromosomes is 46 but ovum and sperm are the only specialized cells and that is why they are called sex cells or gametes so they have 23 chromosomes each so ovum has 23 chromosomes the sperm cell will also have 23 chromosomes so when they combine they form a cell with 46 chromosomes now this cell that is the zygote will now undergo multiple division to form more and more cells. So gradually a group of cells will be formed, some cells will combine to form tissues, they will start forming organs and that is how a fetus will be formed and then the fetus will gradually develop into a small baby over a period of 9 months. So that is how this zygote will develop further. So different body parts will be seen in the baby which is present inside the mother's womb and that is how after a period of nine months it takes nine months for full development of the baby and then a baby will be born so whenever uh, if you look at a newborn baby you see that it has got all the basic features it has got well developed eyes ears nose fingers legs hair everything is there in the baby because that entire development has taken place inside the uterus of the mother so that's how the that's how it happens post fertilization now important thing that needs to that needs to be remembered is that this for unfertilized egg so this is the unfertilized egg which is yet to be fertilized by the sperm this unfertilized egg remains alive for 24 hours so approximately for 24 hours it remains alive so that means if fertilization has to take place then the sperm needs to fuse it within those 24 hours because after that this will no more be alive so even if the sperm reaches the fallopian tube there will be no egg to fertilize therefore no fertilization will take place no zygote will be formed therefore no baby will be formed so a baby a woman becomes pregnant only when the sperm and the ovum meets and they have to meet within these 24 hours when, when the egg is alive. So when the egg is released, that is when the egg is actually released into the fallopian tube. So from then it remains active only for 24 hours. So if fertilization takes place immediately after ovulation only then successfully fertilization can happen and there are chances that a baby can be born so that's how the pro the concept of fertilization works now here you also see that 
it is just one sperm which is needed to fuse this egg. So even though there were millions of sperms which were produced by the male body, but unfortunately only hundreds of them could reach uh, finally the egg and only one of them is successful to fuse the egg. So even though so many sperms were produced, but only one is sufficient to fuse the egg and to give and to result in the formation of a new organism. So fertilization can also be of various types. So broadly there are two types of fertilization that is internal fertilization. So here the process of fertilization that means the process of fusion takes place inside the female body. That is why it is called internal fertilization. Now the best example is human beings because Till now we have discussed a lot of things. So what did we see? That the exact fusion will take, pairs, take place somewhere near the fallopian tube because the ovum is there in the fallopian tube and the ovum cannot move. So the sperm will somehow reach the fallopian tube and then the fusion will take place in the fallopian tube inside the female body. So this is an example of internal fertilization. The other type of fertility, it, it happens in other organisms also like dogs, cows, cats. So in all of these internal fertilization take place. The other type of fertilization is external fertilization. So here the fusion takes place outside the female body. That means in this case what happens is the female will release its egg outside, it's uh, outside the body. Male will release the sperm outside the body and then somewhere in the external environment they both will fuse together to form a new organism. So one such example is frogs. In frogs, toads, fishes, in all of them, what the fertilization so in all of these water acts at the, as a medium where fertilization takes place so what happens is the eggs are released into the water the sperms are also released into the water and then they both meet and fuse together in the water so nothing happens inside the female body everything happens in the external environment and that is why this is called external fertilization So let us see how exactly external fertilization takes place in frogs. Now as I said water acts as a medium for fertilization. So all these, so you just look at the examples like frogs, toads, fishes, most of them are, they spend a good amount of their life in water. So water acts as a good medium where fertilization can take place. So here what happens is female lays hundreds of eggs. Now this is again another important difference. Now, wherever internal fertilization takes place, mostly, for example, in human beings, the number of eggs which are being produced by a female is very limited. In fact, in human beings, under normal situation, a female produces only one egg per month. So the number is almost fixed. Sometimes in rare cases, it might be two, but otherwise it is normally one in every 28 days. But in case of frogs, the females lays hundreds of eggs. So what happens to these eggs so this is how the eggs will look like so these eggs are released into the water now even though there are a large number of eggs which are being produced but not all of these eggs get fertilized so we will look at the reasons also here male releases millions of motile sperms so the sperms are also released in millions the eggs are released in hundreds so when you have so many sperms and so many eggs do you think that several uh, new frogs will be born well even though the number of eggs and the number of sperms are very large but not all of them get fertilized because one primary reason is in this case the eggs are uncovered so the eggs are just released into water the eggs are quite delicate in the initial stages so and moreover they are exposed to the environmental changes like they might get destroyed by wind they might get destroyed by rainfall so they might get destroyed by any adverse climatic conditions but in case of human beings the egg remains well protected inside the female body so here there is no protection at all moreover there are chances that the eggs might get eaten by some other aquatic animals some bigger fishes might eat the eggs so that means also many of the eggs or many of the sperms might get lost so even though the number of eggs and the sperms produced are very high but compared to that you do not get that much of fertilized that much of fertilization 
Now the sperms swim through the water because the sperms are motile so they can move through water and then finally they are able to reach the eggs and when the sperm is able to fertilize an egg that's all that's all we want so when the sperm and the egg comes in contact fertilization takes place and when fertilization takes place again a zygote is formed and then that will again gradually develop to form a new organism so that is how external fertilization takes place in thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.